So ladies and gentlemen, I have Sanjay Ji back again after that wonderful, amazing uh, video presentation he gave last week. So this week, he's going to continue on with his journey with Panchanga here. So uh, welcome once again. Thanks, Kapil. Thanks. And uh, uh, we are back in uh, action, as you can see. Thanks to you. I got full uh, energy and into to get going and get tracking with this. All right. Uh, basically, the way I look at it is I got a small, hang on, let me look at the thing. Yeah, this is the upload. Okay. Hang on, let me, yeah, okay. Let me get the upload, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, share a slide with you. Okay. So you can see this slide now. Yes. Right? And this is a slide which we have for today. And uh, we are... Can you see the slide very clearly? Yes, yes. It's, uh, this is our topic uh, on the KRS channel. Uh, we are speaking on the five limbs of time. This is the part B. I took your cue last time, you know, you talked about let's go one step and do each of those uh, uh, five angas first and get a broad base, a good foundation, yeah. and then go into details. Yes. There's no point in taking just one into details without having a full foundation. Right. So that's why I took the idea of doing the Trimsha 30 Tithi. So there are 30 Tithis and they are the 30 lunar days. So that's what we'll talk about a little bit. We talk about relationship link, how this Tithi is actually linked to relationships, how it is linked to marriage and the quality of marriage. This Tithi is very, very important about marriage quality. Then we talk about marriage and Dharma link. I mean, what link? can a tithi have with dharma, the ninth house. Yeah. So we are going to see that. And then we'll do a little bit on panchanga doshas and tithi bhavas. I don't know whether we'll have time for that today. Okay. So let's get going. We have done this slide previously. Yes. Just a recap. Vara, Agni, we covered this last time. There were the seven grahas, the seven weekday planets who were the varas. So today we are doing the tithis, which are Jala Tattva. Jala has to do with water. The Devata for this is Durga. And basically it's a social. It's how you have relationships, how social you are as a person, how you deal with other people, and uh, how you mix with others. So the entire thing is about tithi. If, the, if your relationship is going wrong, then it's all about tithi. It's not just the planet in the seventh house, you see, for example, when we talk of Sade Sati, what is Sade Sati? Sade Sati is the Saturn moving over your moon. And the moon is a Jalatattva planet. You see that? Yes. So fundamentally, Sade Sati ends up spoiling our relationships. And that's how we want to go away. We want to go away to a secluded place. We want to go away to some remote area. We want to go away from family, from friends, from work. It's, it's you know, that is the Saturnine effect on your mind, yeah. which is again a Jala or a Tithi relationship. Okay. So there are eight Grahas involved over here. 15 Tithis are there in the Shukla or the bright half, the waxing half of the moon and 15 in the Krishna. The remaining we won't go into today, okay? Okay. So what we are seeing now is we are now going into go. If you look at this, a clear depiction of what happens in the Shukla Paksha and the Krishna Paksha. You see the two black moons over here. They yeah. are actually not one, but two black moons. People always only talk about Amavasya as being black. Everybody knows Amavasya is black, but nobody talks about Shukla Pratipat as also being black. Both are equally black. If you say Amavasya is bad, Shukla Patipat is equally bad. That is lesson number one. People okay. should forget that. What's happening is, as the moon conjoins the sun, that is zero degree separation over here, you see, that is when the moon is absolutely black. That's the Amavasya. And then the moon starts moving away from the sun. 12 degrees is S1 or Shukla Patipat. 24 degrees Shukla Dvitiya. You can see the size of the moon. It's yeah. a line over here, you know, with two horns. The moon has very sharp horns in Shukla Pratipat. What does that mean? That means somebody born on Shukla Dvitiya, 
has sharp pawns. Shukla Pratipad can be very, very dark. Amavasya and Shukla Pratipad can be absolutely dark moons. The mind can go into very uh, negative thinking. And Shukla Dvitiya, sharp horns. You can poke others with the horn. You are poking people. You are, you are very, uh, you are not easy person to deal with. You see that? Yeah. And, and, and then as the moon goes further and further, you can see the horns are becoming smoother and smoother and smoother. And somewhere in Ashtami, you see that Shukla Ashtami? Yes. A half moon. So the horns are very little left. And then they start smoothening out. And then, you know, we are going towards Purnima. And on Purnima, exactly 180 degrees, you can see it's a full round moon. But still, there are horns, although the horns are not visible. Because of the moonlight, technically these horns, which are there, they are not visible. Yes. And now, when we look at the Krishna Paksha, if you look at Krishna, you will observe the Krishna Chaturdashi is like Shukla Dutiya. You see that? Yeah, they're very all identical to each other on the opposite end. Yeah. Exactly. But you look at the horns, Kapil. Yeah. These horns are facing to the left and these horns are facing to the right. So what happened in Purnima? You see, these were left facing horns. On the, on the Shukla Paksha, the horns are to the left. Or in other words, hey, it is left brain. Shukla Paksha is left brain. Krishna Paksha becomes a right brain. Oh, so wow. basically, this we see, Shukla Paksha is like Vishnu Paksha. Krishna Paksha is like Shiva Paksha or Rudra Paksha. Another differentiation is Shukla Paksha is Rama Paksha. Krishna Paksha is Krishna Paksha. So what we are seeing is these horns which are opposite, where are they flipping? At two points, at the Amavasya point, the horn which was facing to the right is flipping to the left. You see that? Yeah. Exactly at Amavasya, zero degrees it has flipped. And similarly, at the Purnima point, the left facing horns are flipping to the right. So these points, zero degrees separation between the sun and the moon and the 180 degrees separation of the sun and the moon are called Gandanta. Oh. There are two Tithi Gandantas. One is a Purnima Gandanta and one is a Amavasya Gandanta. So even Purnima itself is a Gandanta? Not the whole Purnima. Okay. Just a little last bit. Less. One fifteenth part. If I take this 12 degrees and divided into 115, roughly yeah. about one degree is actual serious Gandanta. Okay. Okay. And similarly out here, there is a Gandanta because that is when the flip is happening. You know, okay. this flip happening in Purnima is about one degree in this Shukla side and a degree on the Krishna side. And this is technically called by the spiritual people as the 16th Tithi. It is called Shodashi. Okay. So, so people who follow Tripura Sundari or they do the Shri Vidya Sadhana, they do Panchadasi for the 15 Tithis and the Shodasi is right out here at 180 degrees. Okay. okay. That is the spiritual aspect which uh, we will leave for a later day. Uh, basic idea was to give you an idea of how these Tithis are and how the horns are to the left or to the right. Because this also plays a role in choosing the dashas, you know. For example, if you are born in the Shukla Paksha in the night time, that means the night is left and the Shukla Paksha is left. So left and left is left. I mean, the same direction. Yeah. So it is Vimshotri Dasha. Similarly, if, you're, if you are born in the Krishna Paksha, which is right, and then you are born in the, uh, sorry, night time, Krishna Paksha, and then you're born in the night, then it is Vimshotari, Shukla Paksha, daytime is Vimshotari. Okay. The reverse becomes Ashtotari. Basically, the whole idea is that the horns are getting aligned to the day energy or the night energy. Okay. 
Now, the, now many people think that Shukla Paksha is better than Krishna Paksha. No, no, no. You That's know, like, they're like, oh, I'm born in Shukla Paksha, thank God. Because they think Krishna Paksha is all about night time and waning moon. No, 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 that's that's a fallacy. If you are born in Krishna Paksha in the night time or Shukla Paksha in the daytime, it is one and the same. Okay. You belong to what is known as the right brain. Oh, sorry, the left brain. Left brain and right hand. You see, right hand, left brain, that's a combination, you know, the left brain and the right hand, that combination is basically Shukla Paksha, day birth, or Krishna Paksha, night birth. On the other hand, if I put right brain and the left hand, then you are Shukla Paksha, night birth, and Krishna Paksha, day birth. You see, it gets reversed. Okay. So when people say that Krishna Paksha is bad, just remind them, Lord Krishna was also born on Krishna Paksha. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Lord Shiva was, birthday is celebrated on Krishna Chaturdashi. I mean, come on. Are you telling me that Lord Shiva didn't know when to manifest? When to manifest, yeah. <laughs> or, or Lord Krishna did not know that. Come on. Yeah. That is very foolish. Basically, it just tells us a certain position of the moon. And these positions of the moon are telling us something about the sharpness of the horns of the bull. See, the moon is a bull. And basically, it belongs to the bull-cow family. And when it is masculine, it, it has horns. When it is feminine, also they have. Cows also have horns, you know. And uh, that's where we say that these horns, that's why the moon is associated with the bovine, you know. I mean, they say that some of these uh, yogis and spiritual people who are jyotshi and they do heavy, heavy sadhana, grahas come to them and they say, Chandra comes with horns. To exactly, them. exactly. When you really meditate very hard, you can see the devata. You see, there are yeah. devatas who are in the grahas. These devatas come to them and guide them. Yes. Uh, for example, if you seriously meditate on Surya, you will be surprised to see Surya will come, but he will be wearing boots. And this was there in the Konarak, ancient Konarak temple, you know, in Orissa. Uh, maybe a few thousand, I mean, it was at least a thousand years old. And that time, uh, they made the statue of Surya to be worshipped, holding two lotuses in two palms, you know, like that is holding yeah. the two lotuses. And he is wearing boots which are coming up till his ankle, uh, sorry, till his knee. So it was very interesting that, you know, anyway, right now we are talking of Rahu. This picture of Rahu that you are seeing is again from the Konarak temple, Navagraha. Okay. You observe the horns in the, of the moon. You see that there are two moons in the hand of Rahu. Yes. One moon is facing to the right and the other moon is facing to the left. And these two moons, if you look at the picture to the right hand side, are the moons of Krishna Chaturdashi and Shukla Dvitiya. So Rahu is manifesting exactly at zero degrees. Oh, that's what it's symbolizing. I'm right in the middle. Exactly. So exactly at, you see, Rahu is here at zero degrees when the sun and moon conjunction is exactly happening. And that is why Rahu is holding these two moons over here and the moons are facing opposite directions. You see the picture, you see the statue. This is the proper statue as worshipped at the Konarak temple. Right now, this statue is in London, in the British Museum. Okay. Anyway, so anybody who wants to see it can visit the British Museum and see it there. He holds the two opposite facing crescent moons. This is symbolic of Amavasya. So if Rahu is in zero degrees of Amavasya at this point, but the sun and moon are conjoining, the opposite, when the sun and the moon are exactly 180 degrees, is what we call the Ketu point. Yes. So these are the two Gandantas. They are Gandantas because exact zero degrees is Rahu point and exactly 180 degrees is Ketu point. This is a very fundamental thing about yeah. Tithi. And, and you understood the derivation, right? You yeah. saw this symbol that is used in the temples. Yes. Good. Now we go into usage of the Tithis. 
names and the lordships. I will quickly go over this. The first thing to know is that the seven weekday planets are the lords of the Tithi and they also have Rahu. So we have the seven weekdays, you know, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus and Saturn from Sunday to Saturday, exactly in that order. And after that, we have added Rahu as number eight. This is the traditional system of doing. But you observe the number nine planet Ketu has been crossed out. The reason for this is Ketu does not have any Tithi Lordship. Okay. Ketu is the only planet that discourages and controls sexuality. You see, Ketu is a planet. He makes all kinds of rules and regulations for sexuality. If Ketu is in the 12th house, he would rather give you moksha than marriage. That is why people with Ketu in the 12th have a problem in getting married. Or even if they get married, they can't stay married. They say Ketu naam kulasya unnatim. So you need to have a baby to ensure that that marriage sustains. Otherwise, Ketu says, why the hell are you married? Yeah. Wow. So Ketu is the only, so Ketu is the true moksha karaka. It is, that is why it is Moksha Karaka. Now you see the problem. Moksha Karaka Ketu does not own a Tithi. What does that mean? That means if you want Moksha, all the relationships have to come to an end. That is the reason why Sannyas is taken by many Sadhus. You know, many of the spiritual people, they become monks. They take Sannyas. So that they totally become like Ketu, Moksha, Karaka and try to cut off all the relationships. Now that's still a very tough job because you can't easily cut off everything. Yes. You know, even out there, they have this uh, uh, societies and they have their uh, ashrams and they live in an ashram and they eat, I mean, they cook food together. It's like some kind of a community life over there. Can you find moksha though as being a family man? That is the path of bhakti. Because Ketu alone is not holding the department of the 12th house. Okay. He's the Karaka, all right. Yeah. But two important planets are there. Number one, Jupiter is the lord of the natural 12th house. Yeah. And he is definitely a boss out there, big boss. He says through knowledge you can get moksha. So that is the path of jnana. And then we have Venus over there. Venus is exalted over there. He says it is the ultimate love. And he says that is the path of bhakti. Let me show it to you. So we have jnana coming from Jupiter. We have bhakti coming from Venus. And we have other paths depending upon the planets. Who are Saturn is the karaka of the 12th house. Yes, Saturn is the karaka. He is an absolute. Yes, yes. Renunciation comes from Saturn. He's always making everybody renounce everything. Okay. Sade Sati comes. Saturn goes to the 12th from the moon and you want to renounce your wife. Saturn comes to your moon sign. You want to renounce life. Saturn goes to the second from the moon. You want to renounce your money and your job. Yeah. Whenever Saturn is transiting, it's all about renunciation. You are right, Kapil. The correct word you have correctly used is renunciation. Transit Saturn is nothing but transit. So as long as there's bhakti in the home and you are a father and a husband or a wife, you can still get moksha if the bhakti is there with, even within the home. Of course, of okay. course. That is a path. That is absolutely I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. So <laughs> I want to make all sure. Of us, all of us, Kapil, all of us are there. All of us. And that is a path that is clearly said. In fact, many of them say that the path of the householder is equally tough. Equally. Oh, yes. It is equally tough. It is not easy. So yes. let's go down to this householder thing now and see the names that we use. These names are Sanskrit names for these numbers, you know. Pratipad is one. Dvitiya is two. Okay. In Sanskrit, it actually means two. Tritiya is three. Chaturthi is from Chaturtha, which is four. Panchami is from Panchama, which is five. Sashti is from Sashtha. You see, each of these are nothing but Sanskrit numbers. And in the last, you have Purnima. You can also call it Panchadashi or 15 or Purnima because it's a full moon. 
And okay. these are the starting degrees and the ending degrees of the tithis. Okay. Here is the lordship of the tithi. And they are exactly in order. Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn, Rahu. We finish on Ashtami. So it starts from Pratipad, it finishes in Ashtami, and a new order starts from Navami. Navami, Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn. You see, we skipped Rahu over here. Yeah. We skipped Rahu. So Rahu says, hey, I got lost. I must have a position over here. So therefore, even in the Krishna Paksha, they are the same. If you observe Shukla Paksha, Krishna Paksha is the same. Excepting Purnima and Amavasya. Because Rahu got skipped out here, okay. he takes over Amavasya. Amavasya, okay. Otherwise, normally you would have had Saturn for Tithi number 15. Right? So then you're going backwards from bottom to top then? Yeah. Okay. Though, though the distance is bottom to top. Degrees you can see. It's increasing yeah. this way. But actually the moon is moving forward. So actually the degrees of separation from the sun are coming down. You see that? Okay. Yeah. This is the full moon point at 180 and then comes down to 168 and so on. It's coming down. The moon is coming down. In a zigzag manner, in a zigzag manner, the moon comes down. They say the moon is, you know, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. It, it walks like that. It okay. walks. The moon god walks like that. And he reaches Amas zero degrees. I this see. Is, turns around and then again starts going forward. Oh, yes. Okay. So, so this is the only anomaly that is Rahu ruling Amavasya. Otherwise, this is very easy to remember. If you know the weekday order, you know this. And just add Rahu. Okay. Okay. So, so the, the, the planet, okay. So the lordship of these tithis, what yes. is that meaning? Is that the tithis taking the quality of the graha and the meaning of tithi will show? Exactly. It? That graha will decide how your relationships is going to control the tithi. Let us say, uh, I don't know what tithi you are born. If I have your birthday, at least I will know. Uh, I can see if I can uh, figure out even I don't know right now. Okay, so we'll see it when you want to. But uh, let's say I am born on Tritiya in the Krishna Paksha. Okay. So Tritiya is ruled by Mars. So the planet Mars is going to decide my relationships, particularly spousal relationships. Because here Mars is talking about relationships and Jala, which is a Venus thing. So okay. relationships, all right, but particularly spousal relationship. Now, Mars is not one of the good planets for this job, you know. So okay. do you think a guy with Mars like that, and let us say Mars was very strong, do you think he is capable of going and having girlfriends or things like right. that? Yeah, you see that? There are certain rules of, of behavior. If the rules of behavior are broken, a relationship is over. Okay. It's like, it's like an army general out there, you know? Yeah. But that's the way I am made up. Now, either somebody can tell me, Sanjay, go to a psychiatrist and change this. How do I change it? I was born in that. Exactly. Maybe I can do some prayers by which this mangal gets a little tempered down. Rather than going anywhere, I might as well deal with my mangal, right? Yes. So what will happen is, for some reason, people will start attacking you, assuming that, hey, you are negative to them. That's Mangal. That is the how. That's the manner in which Mangal will come up. You see that? Yeah. And for some reason, and who are the people and all that we will see from the chart. But this is a very critical part of your relationships, because this will decide particularly spousal relationship. Okay. Because if your spouse is Mars and you're Mercury, I mean that's. That's a battle. No, right. it's not. No, it's not like that. For me, my spouse is to be with my wife. I mean, it's not just with anybody and everybody. It is how the planet is placed in my chart, in whose house it is placed. Is it coming under some kind of a control? Is it an exalted Mars? Is it a debilitated Mars? I mean, how is that number? Okay. So the water boy, this planet becomes the water boy. He is the relationship link and the quality of the marriage. Venus is the natural significator for Jalatattva. So this water boy planet is, we are going to study him from Venus. How is he with Venus? 
we can say hey mangal and venus are the worst of enemies we can also say mercury debilitates venus everybody has a problem with venus if yeah. you see calmly everybody has a problem with venus and the funny thing is even venus has a problem with venus <laughs> <laughs> it is <laughs> this is there in all relationships now look at venus moon is strained now water water is coming the source of the water is the moon but mm -hmm. venus and moon is strained due to demand versus supply venus is the demand for emotional resources whereas moon is the supply of the emotional resource if you are mentally tired you can't go for dinner if yes. you are mentally tired you can't smile so you see mind is very very important your emotional resources are coming from the moon and these emotional resources are being used by venus so you see the jala tattva how it is playing out moon and venus are both jala tattva planets but moon is the supply and venus is the demand moon for example in the morning you have more emotional resources in the evening you are brain tired if you have worked hard Wow. If you are meditating, you will observe you have more emotional resource. So people who meditate, automatically their relationship will become better. It is as simple as that. So no matter who the planet is, who is the Lord, a simple remedy is to meditate and get more and more emotional resources so that you can deal with your relationships. Now, the Tithi Lord is the Jala Tattva significator of the chart. It is like Shukra. It is like a Shukra in your chart. Okay. So now which house is the important house for Shukra? It is the seventh house, right? Yeah. So we are going to see where this Tithi Lord is placed from the seventh house to see how your, your demand, how much demand is there. Is there a lot of demand on you or is there low demand on your emotional supply? Okay. Second, we are also going to see this Tithi Lord from the fourth house because that is the moon position. Yeah. To see what is the supply. So basically what is happening, moon is supplying to the Tithi Lord and the Tithi Lord is supplying to Venus. You see that? Mm -hmm. So the Tithi Lord is the connection between moon and venus because after all what is tithi tithi is nothing but an angle between the sun and the moon and what is being supplied it is called soma you would have heard of soma yeah soma is a name of the moon god soma is a juice soma is the giver of life and all that soma or part of the soma see there are two parts to it one is the Vayu and one is the Jala. The Vayu is going into the Nakshatra Lord and the Jala is going into the Tithi Lord. The moon is giving us two things. So from here, we are getting this Soma and the Soma is going to Venus. So the Tithi Lord is very, very critical. Get the idea? Yes. Now, if the Tithi Lord is ill-placed or it is weak, marriage will not be good or may not survive because fundamentally you don't know how to hold on to the relationship yeah that relationship which is ruled by the tithi lord gives great emotional satisfaction marital bliss for example if let us say you uh, let's say somebody has jupiter as the lord of the tithi and is born, let us say, in uh, Gemini Lagna. Can I say that, hey, Jupiter is the lord of your seventh house and he is also the lord of your Tithi. Mm -hmm. So you are going to get a lot, a hell of a lot of love and satisfaction in your marriage and relationships. Yeah. But what happens, what happens if that doesn't happen? Let us say he was, he was, let us say, Taurus Lagna. Then I will say, okay, the first marriage, and let's say Jupiter is in second house. I'll say, okay, the first marriage which is there in the seventh house is not giving Jupiter. 
But then when I go to the second marriage, which is coming to the second house, maybe he will find Jupiter there. So what we are looking for here is in which house is the Tithi Lord associated by either placement or by lordship or by at least aspecting or conjoining the Lord of that house. So accordingly, you know, we know the first marriage is seventh house, second marriage, second house, yeah. third marriage, ninth house, fourth marriage, fourth house and so on. Yes. So, you know, which relationship is going to be really fabulous? Now, if the natural benefit planets are in the 11th house, now this is another thing about Venus. All the Soma was taken, you know, a part of the Soma was taken from the moon and given to Venus, right? This is the mental. But Venus is going to utilize this Soma to get relationships and to hold on to relationships. Now, there are two separate things. Let us say the P is where Venus is, okay? So the the signs behind Venus are the ones who will bring marriage. So let us say Venus is in house number seven. So planets in house number five and house number six will help you to get married. This is a very, very important part in relationships. So if you have Venus, let us say in uh, Libra, then you need a benefic planet in Virgo, or a benefic planet in Leo, these guys will help you to get married. But sustenance of marriage is based upon second and third houses from Venus. So if natural benefic planets are in the 11th house or 12th house from Venus and the Tithi Lord, it is easy to marry or to have a relationship. Okay. Relationships are coming from the Tithi Lord, whereas marriage is finalized by Venus. And what if there are no planets either in the back or in front of Venus? That's good. Okay. That means nobody is troubling you okay. or pushing you to go get married and nobody is telling you to break out of marriage. Okay. See, when you have benefics out there, they will tell you stay married, stay married, stay married. If you have malefics, get, break, let go of the marriage, marriage won't last, marriage won't last, marriage won't last. If you have benefits behind you, get married, get married, get married. You see, malefics, break the marriage. I mean, no, no, no marriage, no marriage, no marriage. So you see, what is behind is telling whether you should marry or you should not marry. If you don't have anybody, you are fine. You don't come by, there is no pressure. Either to get married or to break the marriage. Break the marriage. There is no pressure even to keep it. To, I mean, it's natural. It's absolutely natural. Okay, so you get the idea about yeah. these two, right? Yeah. Good. So we are clear on this. Mm -hmm. Now, let us see the chart of a famous astrologer. K. N. Rao, you would have heard of him? Oh, of course. <laughs> okay, Rao Saab, and you can see that uh, Rao Saab was born on a Monday, whereas he is born on Shukla Prathama or Pratipad, which is ruled by the sun. His Tithi Lord is the sun. Okay? Okay. Now, the water boy is the sun, as I call it. Now, where is the sun? 12th house with Mercury Ketu. Exactly. Yeah. And in which tithi? It is Shukla Pratipad. So how is that tithi? Is there any moonlight there? No. no. It is just like Amavasya. We yeah. just discussed that. There is no moon. There is no moonlight in that tithi. It's a very, very dark moon. So, firstly, the Lord of the Tithi is the sun. He is placed in the 12th house in Marana Karakastana. Yeah. And there is absolutely no light in this Tithi. So the remedy should have come from the sun. Normally we would have done some remedy. We would have seen the sun for marriage. But he is in Marana Karaka. Okay. What about Mercury? Well, if you look at Mercury very carefully, out here you see Mercury. Oh my God, Mercury is combust. Combust, yeah. What about Ketu? Ketu is anyway in the 12th house. And when two planets, Mercury, Kambas, Sun, Badakesh in 12th, in Manan Karakastana, why would Ketu want to give marriage? Yeah. Ketu will say, hey, go towards Moksha. What are you doing? I mean, he's already, Ketu will only give the results of the planets it conjoins. Yeah. So obviously, even though there are three Neshtagraha, 
and telling him that hey there can be three opportunities to get married but rao saab will follow moksha karaka kit that's the reason why he never married interesting isn't it yes so Is although you look at, look at his chart on a normal basis it'll be like oh beautiful moon beautiful venus exactly the mars the seventh lord of course they're going to get married but again we miss all these little tiny important specs the most important thing is the tithi yeah what is a tithi a tithi is the relationship between the sun and the moon between the male and the female yep it's not a single factor it is two factor yeah that's what marriage is and if you look at the moon by itself is the 10th lord in lagna as a graha it's fine but as a tithi it's there's no there's no light in the moon yeah also you see seventh lord is in lagna it is fantastic when the seventh lord is in lagna with the lagna lord the person will marry very very early exactly at a very young age how come it didn't happen in his case because you see it is finished we are clear right yeah so the he also has a muni yoga as well yeah there are so many yogas yeah. i mean it's very very difficult to say why he did not marry just from the rashi chart yeah just from the rashi yes yes of course people can see navamshas and all that that yeah. is prices rising and all that stuff and the seventh lord mercury anyway is combust yeah the navamsha if you remember is navamsha but that's separate. separate i want to see you know in the tradition you look at the rashi and you should be able to say it okay he's born on shukla pratipad there's no light in the moon okay where is the surya badakesh in 12th and how about the 12th lord kambas oh my god what about ketu no way moksha karaka will work like moksha karaka you make him very spiritual he will give yeah okay so that's him now mahatma gandhi look at this chart in the previous one he has also got the sun in the 12th house he is also libra lagna yeah the seventh lord in lagna mars with yeah. venus same combination you see that in kendra to the moon that's right yeah <laughs> he married very very early because wow. you know why in his case he was born on krishna ekadashi and the water boy here is mars ah. and mars is the lord of the seventh house seventh house so we have to see you see the star where where is mars placed from the seventh house see i'm seeing this north indian chart then you can see from the seventh house where is mars it's in a kendra yeah. wow whereas in the previous chart from the seventh house where is surya it's in the sixth house yeah so you see this is a much much better position and not only that here mangal is the lord of this star yeah so obviously he will marry he will marry early and he will stay married okay but you can see this mars and venus is in some kind of a gandanta yoga because agni and jala mars is agni and venus is jala yeah at so some point of time he decided to take brahmacharya although he was married right and, and also i mean you can see that he was in a way brahmachari with saturn second to it and sun 12th to the yeah there's a lot that is that is a papa kartari happening on that venus if you look at this poor venus yeah there's a lot of papa kartari happening a papa kartari is not a good yoga yeah papa is sin kartari is from kara to do papa kartari can make you do wrong things also agreed that it made him a brahmachari yeah. but there are things that he experimented with which are not very good oh yeah yeah of course yes we we that is the papa um, you see you see that is a mars venus thing those experiments yeah. because because other people suffer mercury suffers because of that thing okay so uh, anyway we leave it here but you can see how he married young yeah now this is the chart of your brainer famous movie star i mean many people know him now uh, we are talking about his tithi lord he was born on dashami tithi 
His water boy is the moon. And how is the moon in this chart? It is Dashami. That means it's a, it's a Krishna Dashami. So that's okay light. That's pretty good light. That's not bad. But the moon is also Lord of Lagna. Wow. So the Tithi Lord is the Lord of Lagna. And from the seventh house, how is it placed? It's in the tenth. Uh, from the seventh, it's in the fourth. From the seventh. What does that mean? From the seventh? Moon in the fourth is in Digbal. Digbal. You see, the moon in the fourth has directional strength. It's a powerful moon. So in any horoscope, if you find the moon in the 10th house, remember that from the seventh, it has got a lot of dig bug. Which means in seventh house matters, the moon will be extremely enterprising. Wow, okay. Because you can also show that with marriage, career will spark as well. Because moon course. is getting directional strength from marriage. Marriage is giving the direction. Exactly. You are right, Kapil. Bullseye. In fact, if you, you use the word marriage to make him look in good light. But honestly, yeah. moon will not just restrict him to marriage. Yeah. Relationships. Every relationship will only add to his career and things like that. And moon is with Ketu. There's plenty coming. That's a beautiful concept. How a planet gets Digbala from a certain house, not just from the Lagna. Exactly. Exactly. Because people always assume Digbala is from Lagna. Wow. Yeah. What about other things? Why is it only brain? Okay, Digbala. The moon is in Digbala from Lagna. Means what? Okay, you got brains. You have a specific kind of a brain configuration. Good. But what about seventh house matters? It's not configured, no? Yeah. Out here, the moon is configured to push the seventh house in full glory. And look at his marriages, four marriages. Virginia Gilmore, Doris Klena, yeah. Jacqueline, and Katie finally till his death. So, so right through, he has been married. And not only that, you can see that the moon is in Maharaja Yoga. What is Maharaja Yoga? A Lagna Lord and the Fifth Lord combination. What is the Lagna Lord? Moon. What is the Fifth Lord? Mars. You can see that. That's a Maharaja Yoga. How do Maharaja people behave? Very ego. <laughs> I mean, the world is theirs. Yes. So do you think that Ketu conjunction with Moon may have brought that, that moksha towards the marriage? Like, no, you're not supposed to have this. You're not supposed to have this. The, it's, it's slightly different. They are never satisfied. Yeah. Because there is a fight going on between the moon and Ketu. Ketu says, break the relationship. And so Ketu puts her tight and the relationship goes. Then the moon fights back and the re new relationship comes. Then again Ketu So what's happening? It's a zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. Yeah. Yo, 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 yo. So you're going into a relationship because of moon, then you get out because of Ketu. Again, you go in because of moon, you get out. Whenever the moon and Ketu are conjoining, there is a terrible danger that if this, if this combination is influencing the seventh house very strongly, then you, know, you, know, you could get into a lot of trouble. Ideally, whenever this combination is there, you don't want this combination to be associated with the Tithi. For example, moon and Ketu are there. So moon should not be in a nakshatra, for example, of the Tithi Lord. Let us say some other planet is the Tithi. Yeah. Then the moon should not be in his nakshatra. Then you know, you are getting in and out, in and out, and you can't blame them. You can't blame them. You know why? Because fundamentally, they, they, Ketu will create a situation. Even if they want to keep the relationship, they cannot do that because yeah. of Ketu. So get the idea. It is, it is, you can't blame one guy just for this. You know, this is yeah. happening. Okay, and because, you know, 12th house, sun is in Maranakaraka, Venus is combust, and all those things exactly. are there. Okay, and Venus is Atma Karaka. So Venus Atma Karaka will have many, many relationship issues, especially in this situation. Okay, now with that being clear, we go to a chart of a Priyanka Chopra, the movie star who just got married. 
She just got married. Wow. Now, in, in this chart, Dwada Shattari Dasha is applicable because the Lagna is in Venus Navamsha. Now, Parashara says that if the Lagna is in Taurus or in Libra, then you got to use a Dasha called Dwada Shottari. So I have applied that Dasha in her chart. Okay, now look at her chart. Excellent. Where is the Upapada? Upapada is in Taurus. We say that Upapada in Taurus, I mean, you know, with three planets in the second house, there's a lot of uh, fight going on over there as to marriage, you know, whether she should marry, not marry, who to marry, relationship, relationship, not marriage, not turning out right. All that stuff is happening. And look at the Dashas. When she was ready for marriage, which is say 2005, it was Ketu Dasha. Yeah. But her Tithi is Mercury. So what is the relationship between Mercury and Ketu? Are they not badak to each other? Yeah. From Mercury, Mercury, if you look at Mercury, I do not know what type of chart you use. If you look at Mercury, do you use South Indian? I use North. I'm North. Okay. Yeah. If you look at Mercury in Gemini, yeah. then Ketu is in the badak from there. Yeah. If you look at the seventh Lord Venus, Ketu is in the badak. So we learned a new thing right now. If the Dasha Lord is in badak to both Venus and the Tithi, he may deny marriage. Yeah. That means as soon as Mercury Dasha will come, this girl is getting married. And why do I say that? Because from the seventh house, it's a trine, it's the nine. Right? And it is conjoining Venus. It is a fabulous combination. But there is a Rahu element, right? Foreign. Yeah. Yeah. So now we learned a new thing. If the Tithi Lord is conjoined Rahu, there could be a foreign element, like foreign language, foreign culture, something foreign to your spouse. And second, Mercury does indicate somebody much younger. You see, this Mercury is very powerful in Gemini. Yeah. The Rahu is exalted in Gemini. So if I take Mercury and Rahu and I put them together, I get somebody who is an exalted personality, somebody who is famous, somebody who is successful also in many ways. And also I get Mercury as younger, much, much younger. And uh, uh, Nick, if I'm right, is uh, how many years? Uh, Seven, eight years younger than her. <laughs> yeah. And you see that one Badak, that Ketu is Badak to both Venus and the Tithi Lord. Yeah. And Ketu is exalted, you see. And Ketu rules the number seven, huh? Vedic numerology. Yes. She passed through seven relationships. Nick is the eighth. Wow. There are some subtle things that I've mentioned out here, but the important factor, the catch is Mercury Dasha came along. Okay. You see that Ketu did yeah. not allow it and Mercury made it happen. That's clear. So we understand that, hey, this relationship is there. This is marriage now. And it's great for her. Yeah. It's good for the Aruda. It's in trines. It's a beautiful planet in trine to the Arud. Why should she not marry? She should be happy. Good. Wish her the best. Let's go ahead to the next chart. Okay. This is one of the most famous Western astrologers. He was the author, famous author of a book called Christian Astrology. Have you read that book? No, no. William Lilly. I mean, many people swear by him. A brilliant astrologer. Absolutely brilliant. But did you know that Lilly was a servant of Gilbert Wright? Basically, he got a job with his master, Gilbert Wright. And uh, until his death, he served him till May 1627. Okay. Okay. And uh, Gilbert's wife died of breast cancer in 1624. That means three years before Gilbert died, his wife had died in 1624. But Gilbert was not the kind of man 
who would uh, stay without marriage. So he remarried a widow then uh, in 1926. You know, 24 she died. He mourned her death for about a year. And then the year after that, he got married to Ellen Whitehair in 1626. You see that? Yeah. Now, but he died. Within a year of this marriage, he died. You see that? How, how, how funny this is. He married Ellen, who was already a widow, and within one year, he also died. So after he died, Ellen decided that she was now looking to marry for love because she married twice for money. She was already a widow once because of money she married. And then second time also she married Gilbert Wright because of his money. These are very wealthy people. Yeah. And then, uh, so she was now ready to marry for love. William Lilly was a very top astrologer. So he immediately cleverly did some calculations and made the audacious proposition. Now think about it. She was much older than him and he was just 25 years old, yet they married in secrecy in the September of that year. So he died in 27 and within a few months they were married in secrecy. Their marriage continued for six years and finally Ellen died. Okay. Okay. And he inherited everything upon her death, which in those days, in 1633, was 1,000 pounds, which today is a few million pounds. A few million pounds. Oh, yeah. 1633 is what we are talking about. Yeah. I mean, think about it. 400 years. Huh? Now you look at the chart. What is the Tithi Lord? He was born on Krishna Panchami mm -hmm. Tithi, which is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter. And where is Jupiter in the chart? He is in the house. eighth house of inheritance. So which means you need to get into some kind of a marriage relationship and then you are going to have this huge inheritance. This wow. is the promise of Jupiter. Now who is the Karakas for the eighth house? Saturn. And how is Saturn? With debilitated Rahu. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, not excellent. I mean, as far as, and this Jupiter is also in Upapada. You see that? Oh, yeah. So he married his boss's second wife. And she died very soon because naturally she was an old widow. And he inherited everything. That was William Lilly. How interesting. Yeah. So, so you see this Jupiter. If you look at Jupiter from the Aruda Lagna. From the Aruda Lagna. Where is Aruda? Yeah. Taurus. The eleventh lord is Jupiter in the fifth house. This is the Dhana Yoga. Eleventh lord in the fifth, aspecting the eleventh house by Graha and Rashi Drishti. Rashi Drishti, yes. So this Jupiter is telling, "Hey, you are going to become very wealthy. I will make you wealthy. I will make you a big guy. But you need to marry for that, and for that to have it will come through an inheritance because yeah. it's the eighth house. But it will come through marriage." Because it is the water boy. Wow. Now, how interesting. One subtle point. One, one without this tithi, you will only have the Upapada to say, okay, he will marry his wife and when she will die, he will have the inheritance. Yeah. But there is no guarantee that he will have the inheritance. From the Arud, it is the Lord of the 11th, aspecting the 11th, so he will have it. 11th, okay. So you look at this water boy from the Aruda Lagna as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's how, what, how are relationships for you? Are they good for your image? Are they bad for the image? Are you, is your image getting a boost? Is it getting screwed? What is happening? Are you, are you, is, is marriage going to ruin you? Or is it going to really take you up? How is your image changing? Okay. He became a wealthy man. He did not have to work as a servant anymore. He could write his books. He could do everything he wanted. Okay. And it's funny, I have Mercury, Venus, seventh from my Arutha Lagna. And through marriage, my life changed. Completely. Yeah. Completely. See, from Aruda, if you have a single benefit in the seventh house, yeah. one, one, you need one, that is sufficient. And you have Mercury and Venus. And Venus is the karak of a marriage. Hey, come on. 
All you need to do is get married and stay married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is not pressure. I know I can't pressurize you because you don't have anybody in the second and third. Oh, no, 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 definitely no. I mean, yeah. just marrying my wife. Is completely... How important that Vivaha has been. For yeah. Absolutely, your Aruda completely changes. Wow. Okay, so, so you see, William Lilly, we have his books, we have his knowledge, we have everything thanks to the magic of this Jupiter. What Jupiter did in the eighth house of Jyotish yeah. astrology is okay. You want to study astrology? I'll give you an in, in, in inheritance. Yeah. And then you don't have to work anymore and you can focus on the book and studies. Yeah. Brilliant, right? Yeah. Okay. Now the next one Marlene Monroe. Okay. Oh, yes. I was thinking about it. I'm like, I wonder of what, yeah, Marilyn Monroe's would be. How can we miss out on her? Yeah. She has Venus. She is born in Krishna Sashti, which is ruled by Venus. Yeah. Venus is the water boy. Venus is the karak of her marriages. And who is going to satisfy such a powerful Venus? Yeah. And look at it from the seventh house. Let's get big bala from the seventh house. Exactly. Oh my God. Venus in the tenth house is much better than Venus in the fourth. Did you know that? Wow. Because end of the day, if Venus is in the fourth, you are having Venus in the head all the time. Yeah. Why do you want Venus to be sitting on your head all the time? You, you, you know where Venus should be in the seventh house. Seventh house also. From the seventh house, this Venus is having Dikbala. That means all the people who see her, Venus goes into their head and they are sort of losing control. I see. Okay. So when you have Venus in the seventh house, yeah. I mean, men are going to go out of control over here. Okay. It's not just whom she likes, it's any man. Even today, her photographs are like all over yeah. the world. I mean, she is like, what? I mean, right? And so you see, Kapil, we find this Venus to be out of control. And, and it is in Aries in the 10th house, means she's going to get success. It's in the Aruda Lagna. Hey, I'll see that? Yeah. I mean, she is famous because of that Venus, it gave her relationships. It gave her multiple relationships. It gave her multiple marriages. It brought her into the movie world. She became a top actress. I mean, she even sang a song. Hello, Mr. President. Yeah. Yeah. And the dress that she wore is now in a museum. Exactly. And what is dress? Shukra. You see that? That's right. Yeah. Even today, people are connecting with her. Now, what is Titi? Tithi is how people connect with you. People are connecting with her. Close to this Venus. Okay. Great. So, so. <laughs> My daughter is outside the room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another Mercury right there. <laughs> yep, yep. They are all jumping. The Mercuries are all happy yeah. and excited. Good. <laughs> But it's a good sign. It's a healthy sign. Look, Titi is all about this. Yes. It's all about this. Come on. This yes. is a good sign. I mean, I love to hear the sound of kids in the background. You're feeling fine, everything. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. But you look at the 11th house and the 12th house from Venus. Okay. Look, now, now, now we apply this rule. Look at the 11th. You have Jupiter and Mars, right? Yeah. Now, Jupiter can overpower Mars. So Jupiter and Mars are showing it is easy for her to get any man. If Jupiter is in that in, in any female horoscope, if Jupiter is in these houses, you know, in the eleventh or twelfth, okay, then she can get any man, any married man also, because Jupiter shows married men, Mars unmarried men. So if Jupiter is there and Mars is there, she can get any man, whether married or unmared. What a blessing of God. Yeah. Mangala Yoga. 
Oh my God, 11th from Venus. Okay, so but what happens to these men when they come to her? Look at the second from Venus and the third from Venus. Second, we have the sun in Badak. And third, we have Rahu. So we have a malefic in the second. We have a mal These relationships are not going to last. And especially she was mainly with like either government powerful men or powerful actors. And Rahu obviously shows that criminal activity and conspiracy through men. Exactly, Rahu. Even yeah. if those guys, she's not involved with any local hoodlums. No. She'll be at the top level. Yeah, the presidents and God knows. Yeah. I'm getting into the numbers, but but none of the relationships will last. But at some point of time, so long as it is Rahu, that's not a problem. But if she has a relationship with the sun, and the sun is angry at any point, he is Maraka also. Maraka. Oh yeah. And she was had an affair with John F. Kennedy. We are not going there. We'll just leave it there. Yeah. She died she died we don't know she died in bed huh? yes 12th house. 12th house you see second and third from venus is ending in the 12th house of bed 12th house of bed yeah that's where she died she was found in bed without clothes yeah yeah we'll go into that this is al gore here now the water boy is saturn you see and Saturn here is the Lord of the seventh house in his chart, just like Mahatma Gandhi's case. Yeah. If the water boy is the Lord of the seventh house, you are having a very nice and long marriage. Absolutely nice and long marriage. And right? it's Saturn that prolongs things for a long time. Exactly. And what else does Saturn promise? Saturn is in Cancer. Hey, Saturn in Cancer in Lagna or the 10th house is Raj Yoga. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he marries his wife, Tipa, he is heading for Raj Yoga. So long as he stays married to his wife, he is heading for Raj Yoga. Get the idea? Yeah. But this Saturn conjoins a debilitated Mars. You see, this Mars is debilitated and he is not going to be very sweet with Saturn. There is a conflict happening out here between Saturn and Mars. And Mars is going to pick up forces with planets who have come to his house. Who is sitting in his house? Mr. Rahu is sitting in his house. So Mangal and Rahu is, is getting triggered. Now, when did Rahu start? Rahu started in 2004. You see that? Yeah. In You're still using the same Dasha, the Dui Saptati. But this time I'm using Dui Saptati because Dasha. seventh lord is in Lagna. Lagna, okay. You always use the Dashas based upon Parashara. Parashara, okay. If the seventh lord is in Lagna or the Lagna lord is in the seventh, it yeah. has to be Dui Saptati Samadasha. Okay. If the 10th Lord isn't its own sign, it has to be Chaturashi. Yeah, those are the Dashas, you know. Now you see Rahu came in 2004 and you can see from 2004 to 2013, this Rahu is in the 4th from the 7th. So marriage continues. Why does marriage continue in spite of Rahu? Rahu is the Lord of the 8th house. He is going to break the marriage. But why does the marriage continue? Because Saturn aspects Ra. Aspects Ra. You see, the water boy Saturn is a very, very powerful planet. He is the seventh lord. He is in Cancer, guaranteeing Raj Yoga and retrograde. A retrograde Saturn is a very, very powerful Saturn. He will fight hard. That means she was a very strong lady. Okay. And she fought hard to keep the marriage she, right through this Rahu period. But once the sun comes, Saturn cannot win. So, Saturn cannot win. You see, every time we are looking at this, so, so basically we find that this marriage has come to an end. So technically this marriage ended as soon as the sun came. Okay. Married in, he married in... Uh, 
by by the time the son came everything is over but you can see he married in, uh, in 1970 40 years the marriage was there rahu somewhere in rahu the marriage ended i mean she got to know she could pull it oh, even the relationship even after divorce they would have had some kind of a relationship or communication and things like that till rahu because rahu is still aspected by saturn but once the sun comes i don't know how much of that is going to be there i see and he has a venus 11th from the water boy benefic yeah you see he has venus in the 11th from the water boy but from venus if we see he has sun and rahu behind him so okay. it's not easy for him to get married he can have multiple relationships but he cannot get married easily yeah because you see tipper was angry about rumors that he was involved with an actress a massage therapist mangal you see that mangal saturn is with mangal massage therapy yeah from where does the actress come mercury in a house of saturn in the 8th house yep that's the actress acting exactly massage therapist and an old heart throb or some rahu somewhere is coming into the picture so mangal mercury and rahu are sort of in the picture so he, and so that's why his wife was mad but then is 40 years of marriage and mangal is debilitated you know so this shani can't fight this guy and the sun together right there is no support coming from jupiter also no at least if jupiter was there or the moon was there or somebody was at least some benefit to help him out the other benefit mercury has gone to the eight. so who's going to help him keep the marriage yeah true true okay now we have done with the planets the last one is i think i'll just do one last one saturn is again the water boy for albert einstein everybody talks about Al einstein's brains yeah you know, but nobody talks about his heart his marriage his relationships how is saturn placed it's in jupiter's sign and there is a parivartana between saturn and jupiter can you see that yes so that is going to create some kind of a problem because when the parivartana will click in you will suddenly let go of the first wife and you will go to the next one because of the parivartana parivartana means change you are changing you have somebody you are letting go of that somebody and then you are getting somebody else that is parivartana and the water boy is changing interesting let us see so saturn is the water boy and uh, he is in pisces and uh, he is with venus exalted hey that's a lot of water out there huge demand for that water huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and mercury lots of friends also demanding and the sun which means people who are in awe of his knowledge i mean there's tremendous amount of uh, uh, demand for that water and so he had two marriages the water boy is with mercury and with venus i'm leaving the sun out for the so the first was a former student mercury is a student right mm -hmm. mercury can be a student yeah mathematics student interesting huh yeah so first relationship with a math student became marriage second relationship was with a cousin so interesting so when these planets are conjoining they are also influencing each other so when one is a student the person is from outside when the other when when the other person is venus then the person becomes a cousin you see that i see okay, okay. they are they are influencing each other when you take venus he will say okay i'll come but you it has to be a cousin or something like that it has to be a mercury a friend a cousin something like that okay but if you are choosing mercury a student then it has to venus has to come to the picture children have to be there venus means children shukra will give children suksha shukra is the sexual act yes and children and children come yeah. from there right. right they don't fall from trees <laughs> okay so so it is interesting that he had two sons from the first marriage and the younger son eduardo had schizophrenia that of course we see from the fifth house from venus because from the sexual act the children will come so the children will come from cancer 
and you see a parivartana between moon and ketu over here you see that yes ketu exchange yep so one child is very fine the elder child is fine whereas the younger child has cerebral okay so, so for him you did not look at the ninth house as the third child you're looking at the third child from venus i am not even looking at upapada okay i am not even looking at upapada i am just talking about tithi lord tithi lord oh you're looking at just from the tithi lord itself okay what happens to this relationship yeah i'm just absolutely looking at an animal instinct inside the human being i am not talking about solemnizing the marriage and things like that other details what is happening this venus is with the sun and mercury so let us say this venus is going to demand children right yeah parivartana in the fifth, fifth from venus is called the giver of children so what's happening is we are having a parivartana kind of happening out here okay so because of that two kids are coming sons because of the parivartana one is very fine and the other one is having schizophrenia disease of the mind so the debilitated moon in the sixth from lagna showed up as a second child as a product of shukra whereas from the other marriage it was different because mercury was already debilitated now this is a cousin anyway bear in mind at this stage we are seeing that two planets are positively influencing saturn and they will give the marriages or relationships because because of this parivartana of saturn jupiter he converted two of them into marriage rest there were many affairs there were many affairs Okay. Now we talk about a film star, movie star, Cindy Williams. Uh, she was a movie star of the yester years. Now she is born on Krishna Ashtami. Okay. The planet who is giving this marriage or relationships and all is Rahu. And how is Rahu placed? Rahu is exalted. Yes. Okay. But for Capricorn Lagna. Rahu is the lord of the second house, is it not? Yes. So Rahu says, "Hey, I am going to give you marriage, but he is going to be some kind of a second. Either he will be foreigner, or he will be a second. Okay. Because he is in the second house connection. You see, he is the lord of this. Some kind of this Aquarius energy has to come inside the Rahu, right? After all, he is Rahu. So he is exalted also." So, by the way, she was married to Bill Hudson in 1982, who was previously married to Goldie Hawn. So, so she married somebody who was married previously, though it was her first marriage. It was her first marriage, but it was his second marriage. You see that. So, the Tithi is not telling us about you only. it is telling us something about your partner partner yeah because why because the tithi is a dualistic thing it is not just about you it is about you and your partner so what we are seeing here is rahu is exalted do you think it's going to give children they had two children rahu is in fifth house right yes and uh, so naturally once and the lord of this sign is venus so anyway they had two children but after the children they divorced it is interesting if you see when she got married she married him in 1982 in jupiter dasha okay but she divorced him in 2000 in Saturn Dasha. Why would Saturn cause the divorce? Well, Saturn is in the Pap Kartri Yoga in the seventh house, and it's eleventh from the actual Water Boy. It's stopping because Mars and Saturn go. It's not eleventh. It's third from the Water Boy. You see, if I treat Water Boy. Oh wait, that's right. Oh, it's third. Okay, okay, never mind. That's a. If I treat The water boy as marriage, 
for third, yes. getting married is not a problem, right? Right? Yeah. You're right. You caught it right, but it was the other way. You're looking at the East Indian. Yeah. Chapter. Right. Look at look at this. Look at this. The eleventh and twelfth are empty. Getting yeah. married is not a problem. There will be many proposals. The problem is in holding on. Look at Mangal in the second. Look at Shani in the third. Yeah. You can't hold on to relationship. This time, because Rahu is exalted, because of two kids, you were able to hold on to it, Venus. But after that, once Shani comes, Mangal, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not done the Antar Dashas, but if you look at the Antar Dashas, Saturn and Mars will be involved at the time of the breakup. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So good. So we have now understood the eight planets as the lords of Tithis and in various different ways we have learned to see them. Beautiful. Yes. Now getting into, uh, yeah, now we can get into another aspect of Tithi. Okay. Another one. I just talked about uh, Rahu, you know. As see, it is not just about you. It is also, the Tithi Lord is not just about you. Okay. It's also about your spouse. The Tithi Lord has to approve your spouse. Otherwise, you can't marry. Yeah. And uh, uh, that is very, very important. The Tithi Lord has to be, as, I mean, that's what's connecting the two of you. It's not just you. So if the Tithi Lord is with Rahu, look at this point or is in Marana Karakastana. Mm -hmm. That means the Tithi Lord. Here it is Rahu, of course. Here it is Rahu. Or it is in Marana Karakastana. The native will marry outside the caste, creed and culture. Here you see the Tithi Lord is Rahu. Yeah. And it is in the ninth house from Lagna. That's the Marana, yeah. MKS, you see that? Yeah. And so he will marry outside his caste, creed, and culture. So Rahu is actually such a step is going to shock the parents or the community. So, so he, Santanam, although he was very, very traditional person, fantastic person, you know, absolutely traditional, great worshipper of Shiva, great, superb man. But he just married outside his caste, creed, and culture. That is modern India, you know. Yeah. You, if you look at his times, 1944, I'm talking about. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. That's really big to do that in that. I mean, those days. Look at him. He belongs to a different generation completely. Okay. Yeah. People at that generation cannot even think of marrying outside their little community. Yeah. Forget even state. You know, it's it's like saying, okay, you are a Bengali. You are allowed to marry a Bengali. That is okay. That is, of course, a minimum requirement. Yeah. Also, he should come from the same caste. Yeah. Also, he should come from the same financial level. Also, he should come. I mean, it is insane. Yeah. So modern India, people said, I mean, come on. Those days, people would do that so that yeah. it was, you know. But nowadays, no. People go outside. They go outside a different culture, different language. He married, look, he's from Tamil Nadu, okay, Santana. He married a girl from Kerala. It's a neighboring state. It is understood. There's nothing, yeah. I mean, it's normal, right? Today you'll say, I mean, come on, yeah, big yeah. deal. How was the marriage? It was a superb marriage. How was, uh, did they live long? She was married till he died. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. Yes. Wow. Okay. Now, now we need to understand dharma is the ninth bhava. Now, how is marriage connected with dharma? Now, here is a statement I'm making. The dominant planet in the ninth bhava is the tithi of the spouse. Ninth bhava from the water board, ninth bhava from the lagna. From the lagna. From the lagna. Okay. You you don't have too many options in choosing your spouse. You know that, right? Right. And what is one of the most important criteria? The important criteria is the ninth house of Dharma must be linked 
with the spouse. That is dharma marriage. That is marriage. Otherwise, it is not marriage. It is just a relationship. Yeah. People can have relationships, but yeah. it is not dharma. For dharma, you need to marry. Yeah. Otherwise, it's not dharma. My whole point is why, I mean, okay, to each his own. I'm not getting into that, but fundamentally, I will strongly advocate that if you are going to be in a relationship, long-term relationship, that is as good as marriage in the eyes of Lord Shiva. So yeah. why not get married? Anyway, you are in Gandharva Viva, so convert that into a Dharma Viva. Yeah. So ninth bhava is now, now another important statement. Ninth bhava is from past life. Yes. So marriage is a relationship from past life. Past life, yep. That means two things. The ninth house is telling me that from your ninth house, from your past incarnation, a person is going to come into your life and play the role of spouse. So anybody who you're getting married to must be linked to you from past life. Past life. Otherwise, you won't marry. You may be in a relationship, you will not marry. Let's see some. George and Barbara Bush. This is George uh, W.B. Bush. Mm -hmm. Look at this uh, chart. You have the three types of chart of George Bush. His ascendant is Leo. Ninth house is uh, Aries. There are no planets in the ninth house. The lord of the ninth house is Mars. It is conjoined Ketu. Ketu doesn't rule any Tithi, so we can cross him out. So the wife has to be born in a Tithi of Mars. Let us look at Barbara's Tithi. She is born in Krishna Tithi, lauded by Mars. Wow. Wow, okay. Yeah. Or in other words, you are using your ninth house to look for the spouse. And here the ninth lord is in seventh. So it is she. She is the tough one. See that ninth lord in the seventh yeah. mangal. He looks tough, but she is tough. Get the idea? Yes. Now let us look at Barbara's chart. Mrs. Uh, uh, Bosch, she is born in Scorpio Lagna. Her ninth house is Cancer with Rahu in it. Excellent. What about the lord of the sign moon? Moon is in Sagittarius with Jupiter. So now we have three planets who are fighting to marry her. We have a Rahu, yeah. we have a Moon, we have a Jupiter. Now when these three planets are fighting to marry her, you see that? Yes. One of them is going to win. Let us see who won. Bush is born, President Bush is born on Shukla Dashami ruled by the Moon. So the ninth Lord won. Yeah. It is not, see, the spouse can come from the planet in the ninth house or the Lord of the ninth house or a conjunctions, you know. One of these three, not the drishtis. One of these three. Drishti is a desire, something. Somebody yeah. desiring is not marrying you. Okay. Yes. It's very easy, it's very simple, it's no-brainer. Okay? Yeah. Good. So now we are going to try this on Sanjay Gandhi and Maneka Gandhi's chart. Okay. Sanjay Gandhi is Capricorn Lagna. Ninth house is Virgo. Mercury is the lord of the ninth house. He is sitting with the sun and Ketu. So either Mercury or the sun has to rule the Tithi of the spouse. Okay. Wife is born on Krishna Chaturthi, which is ruled by Mercury. Both sides. Okay. Yeah. Now let us look at Maneka Gandhi. In the case of Maneka Gandhi, the ninth house is Jupiter. Jupiter. Okay. Yeah. But the moon is there in the ninth house? Yeah. But does the Lagna Lord? 
but the ninth lord jupiter is sitting with the sun so normally what would i have said either she is going to choose somebody from moon or from jupiter or from the sun that is going to be her choice of husband either she will choose moon or she will choose jupiter or she will choose the sun yeah now who is the lord of the ninth we said jupiter, jupiter. right yeah and by the way jupiter is combust in this chart oh okay now we learn something new out here if the lord of your ninth house is combust then maybe your choice is not going to work yeah so we have to then maybe look at planets aspecting do we have a saturn aspect coming over here yeah yep saturn is aspecting and there is no other aspect on jupiter see yeah. we are looking at the ninth lord jupiter jupiter is combusted so he's out ideally jupiter should have been a very good candidate but i mean none of sun moon jupiter all are out so saturn is the one who's aspecting right yeah so it is possible that saturn can force the marriage that's true yeah because saturn is also the seventh lord in the fifth house aspecting the seventh and the lord of the tithi he can force the marriage yeah. because jupiter is combust if jupiter was not combust he would not listen to this proposal of saturn get the idea yes so what happened is she met sanjay gandhi who pursued her he saw her in an advertisement of bombay dying and he pursued her they met at a party in her uncle's house uncle mercury so sanjay gandhi used mercury uncle of the spouse okay colonel he was a colonel mercury in the sign of mars yeah okay or a brigadier somebody like that big huh? big army guy and she was called to the party and they met up over there and he pursued her and he took her for a party to the mountains you see if you see his tithi lord saturn you see saturn is his tithi lord you see that yeah so saturn is forcing this marriage okay so he is pursuing her to marry her she is sort of okay she is careful because she knows then both these planets are in the sign scorpio so scorpio is the yoga rashi where the water boys are meeting yeah but this is where the planets are meeting in the planet earth which part of the planet earth it's going to happen is fourth from here 1 2 3 4 the place for yoga is always in the fourth so mercury and saturn can meet or marry in aquarius otherwise this marriage is not happening how if she is given a choice she will choose sun jupiter or the moon she is not going to choose saturn yeah and he wants to marry mercury he is very clear that's his tithi lord what about so yeah. the, but very peculiar thing happened her father found out that these two had gone for a party to the mountains <laughs> oh. <laughs> he chased her over there into the cottage he put a gun on this guy's head sanjay gandhi's head he called a priest over there and with the gun pointing on his head they were married oh my god you didn't know I, that I, i did not know that happened <laughs> i mean it's incredible i mean if you look at see the only time see the combustion when the yeah. ninth lord is combust in marana karaka sthana remember my first rule the ninth lord is the one the dharma link how is marriage happening if the ninth lord is with rahu if the ninth lord is i mean in marana combust or in a bad position then the marriage will be difficult in a bad situation yeah so the poor girl had no say her father colonel anand was holding a gun to her boyfriend's head so interesting huh yeah wow so you got to be careful 
if the if your tithi lord and the part and the girl's tithi lord if the boy's tithi lord and the girl's tithi lord are in the same rashi then when they go to holiday in the fourth house from this rashi aquarius you know aquarius is mountains cold mountains himalayas or mountains like that you know a resort in the mountains yeah that's it marriage will happen or in other words we know that hey you want to take your wife for a holiday see where her tithi lord is placed oh yeah <laughs> wow just from simply the tithi it's um, it's amazing and the fourth from there is where she will say yes oh yeah interesting huh yeah but if you are bad guy shani and rahu you see shani and rahu are both over there you see shani mangal parivartan over here yeah the gun in the mountain <laughs> oh my god that's okay yeah. now jawahar lal nehru and kamla nehru this is a beautiful couple now the time of kamla is not right but i have taken an approximate time i don't have an exact time okay so uh Jawaharlal Nehru was cancer lagna and he was born on a Thursday on Krishna Saptami so the lord of his tithi is Saturn now if you look at the tithi lord Saturn from from the 7th house it is in the 8th do you yeah. see that yeah can that give disease absolutely but since he is the lord of the 7th house he will give marriage Okay. we have we have learned that if the if the tithi lord is the lord of the seventh it yeah. will give marriage like gandhi you know like gandhi married and he stayed married but in this case the marriage is breaking because saturn is in the eighth from the seventh or some chronic illness chronic disease eighth house so the tithi lord in the second house is not a good sign it can give chronic disease to spouse also you saw that in the case of william lily right tithi lord was in the 8th house inheritance because of spouse yeah. so the two 8 houses the second house and the 8th house these are not good houses for the tithi lord okay, okay. just like the moon you know exaltation debilitation exaltation debilitation you don't want that that neither the crazy high or this because from the 7th house there is no balance 7th house is all about balance all about libra okay now when we come to her chart she has ketu in the 9th house her 9th lord is mercury it is not conjoined any planet and uh, the only planet aspecting this mercury is saturn again from scorpio yeah formally i would not give saturn the role it would not be her choice she yeah. is not choosing do you see my point what i'm trying to say yes what will the girl choose the girl will choose either on the basis of a planet in the ninth house or the lord of the ninth house lord of the ninth house planets aspecting are sort of compelling her to marry now look at the 1899 india what do you think was happening in india in 1899 born first that was the british uh, rulership and just extreme conservative exactly. society yeah. women had no say yeah the dads would decide and jolly well quietly go sit down over there and go away that's all yeah it was i mean you got no choice it was not the girl seeing the boy it was the boy would come to see the girl but even that was not allowed at that time oh wow sometimes they would allow it very rarely but otherwise no now let's look at barack and michelle barack obama michelle obama yeah here his ninth lord is mercury and it is with the sun okay yeah 
and uh, we have Michelle born on Shukla Chaturthi ruled by Mercury, bullseye. Yeah. Dharma Patni, your protector. So interesting, huh? Yes. The ninth lord is always turning out to be the opposite sex. The opposite sex, yeah. So if Barack Obama is male, his ninth lord is pulling a female. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Wow. Something very important to know that the ninth house is spouse, is the connector to spouse. It's your spouse's tithi. Right? See that yeah. Mercury over there? Now, what about Michelle Obama? I am taking, her time is again unknown. I am taking an approximate time, uh, about 10 p.m. in the night. Here, the ninth lord is Venus. It is with the moon. Then I can say Dashami is working. I don't know the exact time, so I can't, you know, I can't take the ninth house rule for this. Yeah. I'm assuming this is Can right. you take ninth house from the moon, maybe? Or no? No, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. It has to be from Lagna. Your Lagna, your life. From okay. the moon, is so many people are born on that day. Yeah, yeah. True. Okay, so we learned about first marriage or first major relationship, first major spouse. Yeah. The first person you were with for a long time. What happens with people who have more than one marriage? What do we do in those cases? For that, we come to one chart. I'll just give one example, Ivana Trump. Okay. okay? The rule is very simple. For multiple marriages, you're gonna see the tithi of spouse. First marriage, ninth house. Second marriage, 10th house. Third marriage, 11th house. Fourth marriage, 12th house. Oh, I see what you did, yes. Ninth from the second house, because second house is second marriage. So ninth from it is the 10th house then. Yeah. You're looking at the tithi of each. Yeah. But what about the third marriage? That would be the fourth house. So to ninth from the fourth is 12th house. Yeah, you see that no, no, fourth is the fourth house. Yeah. See, the first marriage is seventh house. Yeah. And I saw the third from there, Mithuna Baba. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I went to the second house. Now you see the oddity has changed. Do you, did you see that? Yeah. If this seventh house is Taurus, even sign, the second house is Sagittarius, an odd sign. So something is changing, right? I can't use the third straight away. Yeah. Okay. So for this seventh house, I will take the third because that is the Mithuna Bhava. Is the agreement, you know, three and nine are the agreements. This is the signing of the agreement. She is agreeing to marry you because of past life karmas. Yeah. So the second marriage, this is the third house, which becomes the fourth house. But because this is now odd sign, and I am configured, Obama is configured, uh, uh, Ivana Trump is configured to treat the seventh as even sign, which means I have to take the opposite. So that is why the first marriage tithi is coming from fourth, from the ninth house, and the second marriage tithi will come from the tenth house. Tenth house, yeah. Because this and this, our oddity is changing. Now come to the third marriage. Third marriage will come from cancer. Yeah. So third, this is again, so the same rule will apply, third house. So third from there is 11th house, you see that? House, yeah. What about fourth marriage? Fourth marriage is in the fourth house, which is Aquarius, right? This is an odd sign. So I have to take the opposite from the third. So the third will be here, opposite is the 12th house. 12th house, yeah. So that is the derivation. So that is how the derivation is done. Good question. I derived it, but the point is easy to remember if you say 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay? Okay. And the change is happening because the brain is configured to see the same. Same. This is an even sign. This has to be an even sign. If you are even tempered, your spouse must be even tempered. Even tempered, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now the first marriage was 
first ninth house is moon and the moon is debilitated winkle male we don't okay. have any data for him so i really don't know what to do you see this winkle okay. male yeah the one she married a second marriage was with donald trump okay now if you look at the second marriage i have to see 10th house yep any planet in the 10th house saturn yeah. right saturn rules the tithis saptami and purnima mm -hmm. donald trump is born on the full moon see that full moon yeah oh yeah bullseye so now you know how to see whether this is second marriage or first marriage you can't hide from god <laughs> You can't hide from a Raj Jyotishi, as I say. You cannot hide from me. You give me, we are married, and I see the charts. Yeah. If I see the charts, I will know exactly which pakka relationship this is. Hundred percent. Wow. At which marriage? If somebody is married previously, the stars will not lie. So you see, Donald Trump is number two. Yes. Let's see the third marriage. The third marriage was with Ricardo. Okay, Ricardo is the third marriage. Now we have to see the eleventh house. What's her eleventh house? It's Virgo. Yeah. Okay, and who is the lord of that? Mercury, and Mercury is with Venus, right? Yeah. In this combination of Mercury and Venus, let us say Venus is more dominant. Let us say. Yeah. Why? Why do you think Venus will be more dominant? He is the Lord of the Seventh. Absolutely. Okay, so let us check. Ricardo is born on Krishna Sashti. Venus. Yeah. He's ruled by Venus. Bullseye. So the eleventh house is giving the tithi of the third marriage. Let's go to the fourth marriage. Fourth marriage is coming from the twelfth house, right? What yeah. is the twelfth house? It's Libra. Who is the Lord of this sign? That's Ketu. Ketu can't give a titi. Take that out. Yeah. The Lord of that is Venus. Okay, Venus. Good. Now Venus is with Mercury. So either Mercury or Venus. And we have already seen previously that Venus seems to be the more dominant one over here. Yeah. The next one, born on Krishna Chaturdashi. Again, Venus. Hey, did, did Ivana Trump? choose her spouses or was it already decided at the time she was born when she was born yeah. you see my point all these relationships are from past life yeah all these men you have to marry so that you can finish your burning karmas interesting well, huh? she burned a lot of karma in one life yeah, yeah. that's a hell of a lot of karma Imagine yeah. Satan, Ketu, Papa Kartari, I mean the works. Exactly. She has gone through the works, but she is still a strong woman. I give her that. Very strong lady. I really admire her. You know, when you go through all this and still you come out on top, you are somebody admirable. Yeah. Okay, now there is one little thing. Uh, if we have a little time, do we have a little time to go yes. through this? Yes. Okay. This is something people know that the Varesha the lot of the weekday is like Agni, right? It's the yeah. Agni last time. And the Tithi, the water boy, is the Jala. Now imagine Agni and Jala coming together. What's going to happen? It's like Amavasya. It's like that Rahu thing. Yeah. Disaster. So if your weekday lord and your Tithi lord are one and the same, oh my God, that means... They are adversely conjoined in a yoga, some sort of panchanga gandanta. It is some kind of a gandanta happening, like a fire sign, water sign gandanta. What's a gandanta? A gandanta is a junction between a fire sign and a water sign. A gandanta is the coming together of the sun and the moon on exact amavasya point. That's gandanta. Either the agni is destroyed. See, when that happens, either your agni is going to be destroyed, and the health is severely afflicted, terrible diseases and what not all. So as soon as the person will get married, you are gone. Or the marriage relationships are destroyed and you don't marry at all. Yeah. But anyway, 
whichever planet is the lord of the weekday and the tithi that planet has become another big big rahu in your chart okay that is a very serious panchanga dosha you can't take it lightly i'll tell you why look at this chart this is the chart of alfred nobel all the nobel prizes you know this guy he donated all his money nobel money yes the nobel prizes he is the guy who invented dynamite look he is born on shukla navami sun is the lord of the tithi and he is born on a sunday so varesha and tithi lord is the sun okay and how is the sun placed in this horoscope it is absolutely debilitated yeah that and uh, you know you know from venus also it is in the second house there are two malefics in the second house from yeah. venus it is one of them so can i say this tithi lord and the varesha this surya is destroying any relationship and you yeah. can sustain nobel remained unmarried throughout his life his first love was a russian girl alexandra who rejected his proposal his second was a baroness who chose to marry a baron instead of marrying him and the third was sophie hess of austria who stayed as a friend for the remaining part of his life so fundamentally he could never really marry and we are talking of 1833 yeah yeah those days people i mean had to keep it very low key and finally what is sun remember the rule if sun is the planet which is having this problem then what will happen you will have danger from the king why king is ruled by the sun yeah government why government is ruled by the sun fire ruled by the sun low morals moral character is the sun yeah. because he is karaka for lagna so these four things one has to check very carefully either you will have danger from a king king means very powerful person or from a government person or from fire or from low morals that will be a fall in your morals okay he was accused of high treason against france can you believe that wow the guy who in whose name nobel prizes are gain being given throughout the world he was accused of high treason against france for selling ballistite to italy and so he had to move to italy he left paris and moved to italy san marino wow. and he died shortly after that of a stroke that so can we say that at least danger from government or king happened because of this yeah oh yeah clear yeah. absolutely clear right now let us see another chart father alfred del he is a german jesuit priest and a member of a resistance group now why did he become a member of a resistance group which sought to overthrow nazism and re-christianize germany okay he was a part of the underground resistance in 1942 mm -hmm. he was arrested in 44 and was hanged now look at it carefully his varesha weekday lord you can see over here is sunday born sun is yep. tithi lord shukla navami again sun so varesha tithi lord sun and this sun is another rahu don't forget that don't get carried away with the sun this is not a sun this sun is having the anger the energy the 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 ferocity of rahu and normally this will come gandanta means it will cause your death it will bring your end so it normally comes towards the end of life or towards the latter part of life whenever this panchanga dosha is there it will come normally in the last part of life if it comes earlier that means you did some remedy and you got out of it or maybe some jupiter has somehow blessed you okay here also you see jupiter may be exalted in his chart lagna lord jupiter exalted 10th lord exalted jupiter yeah. all those beautiful things but the sun is in the 6th house that's a very terrible surya 
for Pisces, it is the sixth lord in the sixth house, powerful, danger from the king, danger for the government. So the government then was the Nazi Germany. The king was Hitler. But not low morals. His morals were very high because Jupiter is exalted. Yeah. He was a priest, a top Catholic priest. His Mercury, seventh lord, is exalted. But the fact remains, he did not marry. He became a monk. Why? Because the Tithi was destroyed by the sun. Yeah. If the sun has to choose between protecting Vara or Tithi, what do you think is going to protect? Most definitely Vara. Exactly. He is Agni. He yeah. will protect the Vara. He will destroy the Tithi. So no marriage. So the previous guy didn't marry. Nobel didn't marry. Father Alfred Delp, of course, will not marry. Yeah. Because we know the son is going to destroy the Tithi. There's no point. He will not marry. Yeah. Vare should be there. Only the Vara energies will be there. But here, you know, it will still have a problem because relationship problems are there. So you'll have relationship problem with king and the government. Okay, yeah. And yeah. finally it killed him. Why did it kill him? Eighth Lord Venus is with the sun. And of course, they also have Rashi Drishti on the third from Arura Lagna. Yeah. Joint or underground resistance. Okay. Yeah. Now, a famous Arab Iron, the lady, Baroness Pisces Lagna again. She is born on a Sunday and again Shukla Navami. So now this is easier, right? We have just done a chart of Pisces Lagna on a Sunday, Shukla Navami. Another Pisces Lagna on a Sunday, Shukla Navami. We now know what to look. She can have problems from the government, but here the sun is in the ninth house. So why will she have problem with the government? Okay. Number two. She may not marry, but why? This sun is with Mercury. It is not in a bad angle with the seventh lord. Let us see the previous chart. The seventh lord, Mercury, and the sun are in Dvirdvadasha. Yeah. 212. The sun and Mercury are in 212. Seventh lord and the sun are in 212. The previous one, the sun and the seventh lord, Mercury, Mars are together. Yeah. But, but, then, but then what is the problem here? Yeah, he did have relationships. He did have relationships, just that he did not marry them because of rejections. So, but he did have relationships. In the case of the father, no relationships, 212. Yeah. In this case, they are together. She will marry. Of course she will marry. Why? Because the seventh Lord Mercury is going to tell the son, hey, I have to marry. And the father will arrange for it and she will marry. And did our marriage um, last? Uh, you are right. That is a lot of uh, extramarital relationships. Oh, she died of at the age of thirty-six. Okay. She died at the age of thirty-six, exactly in the same age in which her father died. Oh. That is, you see, what happens when your varisha and your tithi is one and the son? There is some peculiar connection that you have with your father. Okay. okay. So, and the sun is also in the ninth bhava, very, very strong. In, in, very interesting that I'm seeing is, you know, this whole Panchanga dosha was given by Mercury because Mercury is conjoined the sun. So now we learn one thing. We are going to take a look at dashas. And we are going to see that if Mercury is conjoined, this, this big Gandanta Rahu kind of Surya, mm -hmm. that means Mercury dasha must be horrible. Yeah. Sun is conjoined Mercury. Mercury Dasha often ill. You see illness. Why illness? Because of sun. sun. The sun is angry. If Surya is angry, you will have a lot of illness. In the ninth year she had, you see the ninth year is the ninth house from Lagna. One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ninth year. Then again she had was in the fourteenth year. Ten, eleven, twelve. Now, 13 will not come here. 13 will take a jump and start from here. Okay. And 14 will come over here. So every time you go one circle, you take a jump ahead. Okay. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We finish 12 in 12th house. 
right? Yeah. So the now now since we have finished the lagna, we jump to the second house. Then from here we side one third. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22, 23, 24. 24, we are finishing in Pisces. Then we take a jump again. So we had started over here. We take a jump again. Then 25, 26, 27, 28, like that. Whenever you finish the 12th, you take a jump. One jump ahead. This jump to the next sign is called Manduka Gati. The okay. frog jump. You jump like a frog. Yeah. Leaving one sign. So that's how we count the years in the Rashi, not in the Vargas. Okay. So you can see that her health problems, uh, year nine, she had headaches and her vision got obscured. Vision, sun? Yes. Yeah. Year 14, Mercury Rahu. She was paralyzed after a bout of measles. Year 14 is here, you see, the sun axis. You can see year uh, nine is here, year 14 is here in Taurus. It is the axis of the sun. Yep. Sun Drishti. And she was paralyzed over there. Then in the 18th year, she had an affair with her tutor. Year 18 is in seventh house and Mercury is with the sun. You see that? Yep. So she had an affair with her tutor. It was absolute scandalous and it, the whole thing had to be hushed up. It was hush hush. That guy had to run. So finally they pushed marriage. How did she get married? She got married in year 21. Okay. And why would year 21 give marriage? Because Ketu is exalted. Ketu is the lord of this tithi. You know, the sun is in the sun is in Scorpio. The dispositor is Ketu exalted. So she sort of uh, uh, so got exalted. So she got married to a man, I mean, a wealthy person having multiple properties and all that stuff. And then she had a relationship later, you know, in Venus Dasha, when Venus came, she got into an extramarital relationship in 1844 with this guy, young guy called John Cross. Okay. John Cross was the son of her husband's friend. And she had a lot of gambling debts. You know, gambling comes from 8th house, right? Yes. So Venus is in the 8th house. Lagna Lord is in the 8th house. And in Venus Dasha, you can see all that thing happened and she also died over. Ah, okay, okay. So you see how that, how that Panchanga Dosha worked in the last part of her life. It was in the last part of life that all these relationships and all these love letters and they had, had to be burned by John Cross who wrote down and admitted that he burnt her letters and all that stuff. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but she was a great one. She was a very great one. She had a vision of flying in which she made a drawing of wings and how steam could be used to power an engine that would help her to fly. She wanted to fly. How interesting. What a brain. Wow. <laughs> Loved mathematics. See, yeah. the kids were excited. Anyway. Now we are going to see an extreme case of uh, this Gandanta Dosha Panchanga Gandanta. Extreme. Bruno Hauptmann. Here again, sun is the Varesha, sun is the Tithilo. Kapil Bhaira, you'll be wondering, why am I taking the sun continuously? I could have picked up any other planet and found Tithi Dosha. My point is I want to convince you that, hey, this actually works. Okay. Once you are convinced this works, the other planets, you can work it out. You're intelligent. Yeah. You can easily work it out. Basic point is, you know, once this Graha is behaving like Rahu, then everything that he's going to touch is going to become like Rahu. Okay. This is, you know, think of one big fat Rahu. An extra Rahu in the horoscope, not the normal Rahu which you can deal with. And look at this sun. This Gandanta, uh, Panchanga Gandanta Surya, he's in Scorpio and he's conjoined all these guys. Who is left out of the picture? Only the moon in the seventh house? Do you find any other planet being left out of this Surya's picture? Maybe yes. you can say Saturn is also left out. Yes. Yeah. So two planets have been left out of the grasp of Saturn, of the suns. Yeah. 
and all of these guys are in it. What happens when five, when, when seven of the nine planets are going to behave like Rahu in your horoscope? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Mary. So Jupiter is combust. His dasha was hell. You can see that, you know, I've written the events for him. And I've used Chatura City Samadasha because the 10th Lord Mars is in 10th house. Okay. You see that, okay? So, so because Mars as the 10th Lord is in 10th house, we are using the Chatura City Samadashas, okay? And Jupiter is combust and the whole Dasha was hell. His father died. And then he got to know in the same Jupiter Saturn period that both his brothers, Herman and Max, had also died in World War One. So father died, both brothers died. He didn't know what to do, so he conscripted in the army. He barely survived. He was gassed once, once Sharpnel hit him, he buried twice, death came almost. Then after he got out of the thing, after World War I, he started robbing people to make a living because he, was, he had no other source of income. Yeah. He was caught. He went to the prison hospital, hospital because he was not mentally okay. Okay, how can anybody be mentally okay in this situation exactly. with so many vows in the horoscope in your 10th house? Okay, then uh, for five years he was there, then he was released. But as soon as he was released, he did a very clever thing. He ran away to New York. When did he run away to New York? In Jupiter Dasha, Mercury Antar Dasha. You see that? Yeah. Now, Jupiter and Mercury are together and we say that when Guru Buddha Yoga Sarva Karya Siddhi, when Jupiter and Mercury shall conjoin, anything you can do. You are a person who is capable of doing anything. Sarva Karya, all works you will get competent, you will be able to do. But what kind of work are you doing? Rahu kind of work. But you are a very competent Rahu worker. So what did this guy do? He went and hid inside a ship and sailed off to. Without a passport, without anything, he went off to America. He got off over there. Then he escaped to New York. There he met his to-be wife, who was working as a waitress. He married her. And uh, then he is involved in that Lindbergh case, you know. He kidnapped the... Read about the Charles Lindbergh kidnapping. The first infamous kidnapping of a baby. He kidnapped a 20 month baby. One year, three months or one year, four months. And what is worse, he killed that kid. And what is even worse, he took the ransom. Why did he kill the kid? Because the kid he was afraid will give him away. And so well he escaped with the ransom money that they could not find him. And they hunted and hunted and hunted for him until Mercury came. You see this Venus Dasha Moon, Charles Lindbergh kid was kidnapping and murder. He was arrested in Venus Mercury. Venus Mercury, he was arrested and he got the electric chair in Venus Jupiter. So how did it end? It ended with him kidnapping and killing a baby and then getting arrested and get, getting the death sentence. So you see Rahu, ultimately the ending was horrible. Yeah. Because all these grahas are nothing but multiple Rahus. Right? Okay, I think I think we have done enough for uh, today. Uh, wow. Timing and all those things we can do next time. Yeah, right? yeah, no, this is, this is amazing. Wow. So uh, next time uh, when I come down from the mountains, I'll spend more time with you. Kapil. Okay. We'll take this further. Yes, no, so this is... Good night. Namaste. So great. Thank you so much, Sanjayji. Thank you so much.